Okay, in chapter 6 we're going to learn how to name a whole bunch of different kinds of chemical compounds. Um, and the idea is that you want to learn uh, the, you know, learn the systems. Let's learn the systems. Don't try to memorize all, you know, 1500 names. <laughs> You're just going to learn kind of like the rules to how to play the game. Um, and then you play the game. So first we have to look at some formulas of elements. Uh, you'll have the periodic table, so you won't ever have to really memorize all these names. A lot of them, though, will, the common ones that we use over and over again will just start to stick. Um, but again, you'll have the periodic table, so we won't have to, to really memorize these. They'll be there, and they'll have the name on the bottom of the periodic table. And some of them you, you probably already know. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, carbon. You better know carbon. Carbon. Um, so... You're going to need to, to know these names um, in, in order to name the whole compound. So we're going to put all these elements together, and, and then we'll get a compound uh, or a molecule. So a molecule is the tiniest uh, independent particle of a pure substance. And for most elements, for most elements, the smallest independent particle is just a, a single atom. So something like, uh, like helium. Helium. Where are we? Helium. The symbol for helium is just He, so the formula of uh, a single atom is the elemental symbol. Something like lithium, right? Uh, lithium is just lithium. Great. But there are a few, there are seven. There are seven elements that form diatomic molecules under normal conditions. So di means two. And those are hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and fluorine. So Honkelbrief, Brinkelhoff, there's a bunch of different ways to remember which ones form diatomic molecules. That means under, under normal conditions, you don't see hydrogen by itself, you see H2, oh, H2, um, O2, N2, Cl2, Br2, I2, and F2. So fluorine by itself is gonna be F2. By itself, meaning it's, it's uh, if it just if you just have elemental fluorine, it's actually this diatomic molecule. That's the simplest form. Where something like carbon is just going to be carbon, um, or lithium is just lithium. These guys have a two at the end; they're diatomic, and that, that's just their most stable form. Uh, another way to remember that is horses need oats for clear brown eyes. Horses need oats for clear brown eyes. Um, so that will, that's all, that's just kind of the first letter of, of each of the elements that are diatomic. Have a little liberty with the eyes there. So here we go again. Horses need oats for clear brown eyes. Another way, if you're more of a visual person, you can see where they kind of stand out in the, in the periodic table. Um, we have hydrogen and then nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. These are all your diatomic, your uh, common diatomic um, atoms, molecules. There's two atoms there. All right, so let's see, when does that come into play? Um, if we want to write the formulas for the following elements as they would appear in a chemical equation. So potassium, potassium, is that a special one? No, that's just K. Fluorine is special, right? Fluorine is diatomic. So if I said fluorine reacts with nitrogen, I'm talking about F2, F2. Hydrogen is H2. We're gonna do a whole lab on just naming. We'll, we'll work on that together. This is N2, nitrogen is N2, calcium, it's just calcium and then copper. It's just copper. There's nothing special about those. So we'll do a whole um, a whole lab on this. You can you can actually get started on this first part. The first part's just going to be looking at the elements and trying to figure out which ones are diatomic. So the diatomic elements are the horses need oats for clear brown eyes. Hankel, Brick, Brinkhoff. However you can remember it. You can use the picture in the periodic table there. But they kind of jump out at you. There's seven of them. Um, now there's some other elements that uh, can form many many atom molecules. So there's different forms. Like this is carbon. This is this thing is called a, a buckyball, where you have all these carbons and there's in this ring structure and they kind of form a um, this ball shape. Um, there's many different forms that that carbon can form. But when we talk about carbon in a chemical reaction, we're just going to call it C. We're not going to say we're not going to recognize a specific type of C, you know, 26 or whatever you have there. It's just going to be C. Uh, just be carbon. Phosphorus does the same thing. Phosphorus will form a bunch of different compounds with um, different numbers of phosphorus uh, attached to it. Uh, we'll just represent that as P, just to make it simple. That's just P. And uh, sulfur, like this is a, a ring structure of sulfur. This is actually a pretty common 
um, structure sulfur, we're just going to call that S, so you don't have to memorize anything there. So the only ones you really have to know are the diatomic ones. The other ones, there are, there are some other ones that, that do exist, in, you know, not diatomic, but have um, you know, more than one. Um, you don't have to memorize those right now. You don't have to worry about those at all. They do exist, but you don't have to worry about it. So just the diatomic ones and everything else you can assume to be um, one atom. Just have one atom.